Hello? Hello? Hello, Dr. Bergdefer, how are you? Okay, I'm fine. What can I do for you? Uh, my name is Gary Engelman, and I'm a registered nurse. I live in Maryland, and um, I was just wondering if you could give me a few, a few minutes of your time. Um, what I was doing was uh, I, I run a support group um, on the Internet, and I have uh, about 900 people or so that are in my group, and um, we're all trying to struggle, you know, to figure out how to treat this and get well um, because the infectious disease uh, society standards are um, the 30 days of, of treatment is very good for someone who just gets bit, but uh -huh. people that are diagnosed late, um, such as myself, you know, misdiagnosed for two years, it's very common, and we're all having trouble getting well. So I just thought I would come to the man himself um, who discovered the Lyme spirochete. And um, if you're okay, I just will record it so that they can hear, um, you know, what you have to say. Um, but I had a couple questions for you, and um, do, you, do you have a few minutes? Yeah, my husband I try to answer the best I can. So, so uh, because uh, it has been years since I've been associated. Right. With, uh, I completely the understand. Problem. But you, you go ahead and uh, you, you ask the questions and see what I can answer them. Okay. Um, Dr. Bird, for the first thing I wanted to ask you was, um, when you discovered the spirochete, um, was it just by accident, or did somebody tell you to to search for this organism that was making people sick? No, it was it was by accident. I was we were working on Rocky Mountain spotted fever, and. Uh, 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 uh. 
around uh, maybe may it cause a disease in, uh, in Lyme. So this is how the, uh, the, the organism was found and was then related to the uh, disease which has occurred in Lyme. So, um, just to make sure I understand what you're saying is, um, and also uh, to follow up with that, um, well, actually, let me ask this first. W were you finding the spirochete just only in the deer tick or all ticks? No, I was found only in the deer tick at that time. Okay. And uh, because we concentrated on the deer tick. Okay. Uh, as I said, we didn't find any spotted fever hits here. We uh, uh, kept our mind open for whatever uh, we would find in these uh, ticks, and we found that a nematode, that worm, in the blood of the ticks. And from there on, we uh, started to speculate that this may have something to do with what has been described long time ago in the literature with us as a uh, 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 thick bone disease. It was uh, 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 the, name, the name of it uh, of the uh, um, of the first European description of what uh, we now call as, as Lyme disease. Right. So you, uh, which I, I, I personally think it's wrong to call this Lyme disease because uh, um, it, it was the origin, it, it was the lo localization of Lyme in which this, this disease did uh, 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 occur. But it, 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 it's now, it's Lyme disease. We got Lyme disease all over the uh, uh, world, and uh, it, it's, it's a shit called uh, uh, spirochetal disease or, or uh, um, borreliosis, yeah, the, 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 the Latin uh, description, borreliosis. Borrelia is the agent. Uh, uh, causes a relapsing fever, and it's now the agent of uh, the disease that was first first discovered or first described in uh, in in the east, as a, in in, uh, um, in 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 the areas of lime lime and throughout the eastern part of the United States. Right. Now, let me ask you uh, another question. When you found the spirochetes, were, were you using dark field microscopy? Dark field microscopy is why it's just sort of the, the, the uh, microscopy that is used Is this what you were using? Yeah. Okay. Um, and Black people, they, 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 one, one side, uh, the, 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 the initial staining, as I told you, we were looking for spelling for Riketia. Right. Yeah, yeah, I got that. Staining for Riketia is different, and it's either games are staining or uh, uh, the, the different techniques and uh, when they the saw those spirochete like organisms I figured that this may be the one that they have been looking for and they have not never been found because spirochetes and 
was a Switzerland, uh, I knew how smart he looked like, I knew what they did in, in the uh, uh, blood smears, and that is, uh, I, uh, at first it was relapsing fever that I was worked on, and the thesis wrote about uh, the, the development of the spirochetes in the relapsing fever tick. It becomes kind of complex now talking about agents involved in uh, various diseases. But uh, the answer to your question, I don't think it's uh, by accident that I found that the, the, the spirochete. I think it's sort of knowing that these species of deity may be involved in this whole problem and uh, how long we were doing then was confirm it by serology with the immune serum of patients in these areas and we were able to uh, connect this together. And then it became, of course, the, the, we never found the uh, Rockman spotted fuel agent that still is in, in that area, uh, but uh, we concentrated on the, the spiral gates and there were plenty of them, as I said, I think, as I recall, 72% of the deities that we examined were positive for the spiral gates. 72%? That was just at that particular experiment, that uh, the, the one that is written up. Right. Now, you said area is about in North Island and uh, in Virginia and in, in other areas where the deity is very common. You find infection rates of up to 100 percent of the tick infected with the spirochetes. When you when you saw them underneath the microscope, did you happen to notice the different forms and mutations, such as the L form, yeah. um, the cyst form with the biofilm, um, and the cell wall deficient? Yeah, did, did in, in my thesis, in, in 1951, in my thesis, one of the objectives of my study was to, to, to follow the development of the spiral heat, and that was a, a relapsing fever now I'm talking about. That was in 19, uh, 1948 to 1951, I wrote the thesis and worked on that, and that was the development of the relapsing fever spiral heat, which is, was Borrelia detonite. Borrelia detonite, which is a, is a different species of spirochete. And I studied the development of 
again, I, my question was, did you happen to notice the different uh, forms and mutations, like the L form and the cyst form? Did you see biofilms under the microscope? Uh, yes, you can, uh, and, uh, to some extent, with the, the, the you got cinema stains, and you got electromicroscopy to demonstrate the morphology uh, of, of the organism and to study that. Now, as far as the more recent development in, in electromicroscopy, staining electromicroscopy, uh, is concerned. We, we didn't, at that time, didn't have any access to it. And, and my thesis in, in the 1950s uh, on, on relapsing fever uh, to study the development of the organism as much as we could using uh, dark field microscopy and uh, other staining procedures. Right. But we did not have access to the most uh, sophisticated uh, 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 techniques that are now being used to develop, to, to, to demonstrate the development of the really uh, worked off fry in the tissues either of patients or of ticks. Right. Now, but again, so I. I I still don't understand if I understood you right. Um, did you see like this, the spirochete going to L form or cyst form or bio, biofilm formation? Yes, yes, you can do that. With, you can do that, but uh, uh, with, with uh, the dark field to some extent, but you cannot do it as, as, uh, as specifically as the uh, some techniques that are now being used will show you. Right, but back then, did you personally observe those? Yeah, you can assume that the, 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 the spirochetes are highly pleomorphic. Right. And uh, uh, you find, find uh, since, as I told you, I studied the development of a relapsing field spirochete in its specific on the source of water. There, the objective was uh, how did the spirochete develop in the tick? And we talked about granules, we talked about uh, the end forms and stuff like that. Uh, uh, but not to the same specific specificity as now is possible to do. Right. Now, let, here's another question for you. Um, Back then, were you able to see um, the other infections that today are, are called co-infections, like Babesia and Bartonella or Lichiosis? Well, we, uh, this is on the, on, on the recent years. I mean, after, after this was, well, it was published by uh, uh, deten detection of the spirochetes, uh, a lot of people and a lot of uh, laboratories throughout the world started to look at things that they had in their rectal stores, uh, not only know what they were, but then they uh, got some hints and they were uh, uh, also found the sponsor of trial heat in various uh, other uh, species of things. As, as well as in, in, uh, in one of the locations throughout the world. So you, so Whenever you find that the United is the 39th grade, uh, whenever in, in, within this uh, area you find deities, you may find them infected with spirochetes. At, that may cause, that may cause disease similar to what was described in Lyme. So you, you saw 39 different strains of Borrelia? How many? You said 39, is that what you said? No, uh, at, at, at the uh, geographic distribution, uh, 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 it's, it's the 39th grade in which you find the, 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 the 39 
line. Now, you, you were infecting rabbits, is that correct? Correct. And when you infected rabbits, where were you, where were you infecting them? And what How did you infect them? No, like, where did you inject them? Like, into the brain or into the... No, they just injected them uh, subcutaneously. Subcutaneous? Subcutaneously. Right. Now, at some point you would euthanize these rabbits and perform an autopsy, correct? Yes. And yes. when you did these autopsies, um, were you finding the spider keats uh, then in the brain of the rabbits? No. Not, not, not at that time. Uh, the, the infection of, of uh, animal to how the spirochete does get into the brain? Uh, My opinion? Yeah, I mean, do, do you think it can easily pass through the blood-brain barrier? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. It's, it's, it's just like syphilis. Right. And, 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 uh, so, it's a stage, there's a stage which, which I, I, I haven't gotten it because the electromicroscopy was the beginning. It was not an advanced technique that they are now using. But uh, there should be. And I'm saying that I'm saying this now, uh, having been away from the bench, but I said there should be a staining procedure that uh, follows the development. of the organism and uh, when, when they used uh, these new techniques they found um, that as we said also with dark field but the, uh, the dark field was not a very specific uh, procedure but it was the best one we had we found long forms we found uh, uh, granules as a possible the, 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 the granular development of the spire case. Usually only the development that we uh, were talking about was by binary fission. Binary fission of the spire case was the only uh, technique that we had saying, well, there must be something going on more than just a binary fission uh, a development of the organism. There must be some complex stages that we cannot find. 
find this that our Savior, and that we cannot find this other perfect technique. And the only ones that we could find was they looked like and some granules. They, they looked that they looked like uh, short forms, long forms, uh, spiral heats with globules with uh, So did you ever um, personally then see the spirochete in brain tissue? No. You never did, but, but no, you... No, but it's very bad, but it's not. We knew, I knew, 1948, I started my thesis in Switzerland, in, 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 working on I knew that you got animals infected, that when you take the tissues of these animals and you put them into additional susceptible organs, uh, animals, that you get an infection. So there had to be something in there that you passed on from one infected to a normal animal. That we were not found, we didn't find it all in the brain. There was, we couldn't demonstrate. But you knew it was there. Well, it had to be there. There had to be something. And I still, uh, uh, we, we faced it the same thing. And that is, what was it? Uh, is it a granular development? Or is it just a spinary fission? into a small forms uh, and then eventually into the normal spirochetal form. And the same thing is, uh, uh, I mean, syphilis was also the same uh, question a uh, long time ago, and they found the spirochetes, that they were able to stain them, and that was the German work by Steiner, because if, if you take Lyme and look at it by itself um, and then compare it to these other diseases that you speak of, Lyme does not typically produce the fevers um, that you see in these other spirochetal diseases. Um, and these other spirochetal diseases that you talk about usually are picked up on quickly because of the high, because of the fevers. And I'm just... Well, because of the... So, uh, 
are you saying that this because the spider keat goes in, because the spider keat goes into the tissue, it's not being picked up by the immune system in the blood because it's not in the blood? Is that what you're saying? Well, yes. Uh, There's a logical procedures that depending on the uh, reaction between the immune system of an animal or the human and the organism. Right. Uh, so, so, so if you if you look at them, and, and and that's very difficult to do with with with, with the lime. Right. Are you aware of the testing um, that's in place today that I believe has been in place um, since the 1970s, um, which would be the Western blot, um, and they also do PCRs, but um, basically um, the, other, the other thing I wanted to ask you is, in the same question, is um, people are, the doctors today are trying to do spinal taps. Um, to find, but the literature suggests that 70% of spinal taps are going to come back negative when, in fact, the patient is infected in the brain. Yes. And um, I wanted to know um, what your opinion is on the current testing for Lyme, especially for people that are misdiagnosed um, two, three years or more, and they're coming up with negative uh, Western blots, negative PCRs, negative um, spinal fluid, uh, and I wanted to know what, what your opinion was on um, the current testing. Well, the current testing uh, with, with the, uh, with, with the uh, I think uh, it's, it's the CDC uh, recommends, and it's, it's questionable that uh, you do take the, the serum and you are looking for the antigens, the diversity of antigens uh, are present and if you do find a certain number, I, I think it, I have forgotten uh, to say that, but nevertheless, if you, you do find a certain number of, of antigens uh, positive, then they call it a positive test. But on the other hand, there are several uh, some patients. Uh, they uh, do not have these recommended uh, uh, number of uh, antigens uh, left in their cell, and therefore uh, this cost questionable or negative. So, do you think? that there are um, false negatives out there, um, lots of them? Yeah, I, the, personally, I, 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 uh, until, until someone comes and studies the development of the spire kit after it gets into, uh, after it's uh, injected into an animal, and that then is, uh, you got an incubation period during which a spirochet may, you know, may develop a, um, may uh, appear in a, an undetectable form, as yet undetectable. So, uh, in other words, our techn technology is in incomplete. Right. It, 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 it all depends on what happens with the spiral heat after you inject it. Now, it's been approximately 60 years since you discovered this, the spiral heat, right? Uh, that's it was in the 1950s, you said, right? Yeah, in 19... Uh, Nineteen eighty one is when you discovered the spider kid? I thought it was in nineteen fifties. No, nineteen uh, eighty one. Oh, nineteen eighty one, I apologize. Oh, yeah, yeah nineteen eighty one. Nineteen eighty one, so yeah. approximately thirty years has passed 
and uh, science is has still not addressed the issue of detection other than a Western blot or PCR. Are you aware of that? Well, we, we, we do have these, these techniques, and uh, if you would say, uh, uh, I don't think they are specific. Yeah, there's, there's some, in some instances, you get a pretty clear cut serologic uh, what? Identification. Well, that's the person that just got bit and just gets the bullseye rash, and then I yeah. agree, I agree with you. However, patients that are misdiagnosed because of the multiple uh, symptoms that can mimic other diseases, and then time goes on, and these patients um, then realize what they have is Lyme disease. However, uh, the doctors will dismiss the diagnosis because the longer time goes on, the less accurate the test appears to be. That's good. Uh, uh, that, is, that is true. And, uh, of course, what, uh, we, what, what, we, what people should do, and I say, no, I've never been retired ever since 19... Uh, 80, 80, uh, 1986, uh, and they were away from the uh, bench and left the bench with some of the questions still open. One of the questions was, was the serology. Why is it that did you have such a diverse serological uh, response? Uh, that is no... Uh, uh, this is, you can say, well, there was no antigen there. Well, uh, but there is some antigen is floating around somewhere in the patient after the spirochete enters the bloodstream. Now, where does it go? We don't know. Uh, we only uh, suggestion is that uh, just like in encephalus, the spirochete finds its way into the brain, and that it is located in the brain uh, for many, many years until the, the immune system breaks down uh, of the patient, and that then the spirochete reappears in a form that we should be able to demonstrate. Well, what's wrong with this is, uh, is you, you as a patient, you said you have for two years, you uh, have had the, the, the disease. Uh, what happens? Where is the organism? Is it in the bloodstream? Is it in the tissue? Why can't you see, can't you see it? Uh, the electromicroscopy shows that you can see it. Well, is this the spirochete that is responsible for a reoccurrence of the clinical manifestations, or is this something else involved? Right. Well, I think part of the problem is is that the testing is strictly serologic and not is not tissue sampling. Nobody is doing direct visualization of the infected patient to con confirm the presence yeah. of the organism. So yeah. that, that would be one problem. The other problem, Dr. Burdefor, I would see is you speak of 39 different strains and that would have been while you were doing your research, but there are probably many, many more strains today. And the testing that's in place looks for the antigen of just one strain. Would that be correct? When there are, That's correct. When you have I mean, 39 I mean, different... I mean, we often, I mean, I mean, myself, uh, I have been sitting for hours uh, on slides looking at them and saying that it comes from an infected animal, where is the organism? So every, um, every strain would produce a different antigen, correct? That's correct. And it may, it may, uh, well, you say it, it does produce a 
years of antigens that we still don't know all of them. So a serological test in the year 2011 is not going to pick up 39 different strains or more. Would that be fair to say? That's fair. That's incredible, isn't it, that science is lacking? And not only are they lacking, but it doesn't appear that anybody has followed your work to, <laughs> to even seek out more. Yes, uh, they have. Excuse me? Yes, they have. But they, 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 they don't want to have the tools that, that this is possible. Let me, let me, let me, uh, 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 after the animal uh, inoculates something into the animal, how long does it stay there? Well, we know from a relapsing fever that you got uh, about two or three different febrile episodes after you inoculate a mouse or a rat, for instance, spiral case. Um, then after the three, four episodes of, of, of spiral case, or spiral case in the blood, then you can't isolate the spider keys anymore. Well, that's, that's as far as it's going on. But if you take the brain of the animal that you inoculate and you grind that brain of the macerated brain and put it into uh, 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 baby mice, for instance, which are highly susceptible, you come out with a spirochetemia, so in other words, you can't stand based on the real terms of the spirochetes or of the clinical manifestations, you can uh, postulate saying that is a reoccurrence of the one and the same strains that I inoculated two or three years ago into the baby mice. That is true, but nobody can prove it. Right. Nobody can see, the, uh, nobody can even see the spiral case in the peripheral bloodstream of a Lyme patient. And wh why do you think that is? Because there is a, a, something there, <laughs> and there is, there is a highly non scientific, but there is something there that we don't know right. yet. Do you think it's possible that it's just not in the bloodstream and it made its way all into the tissue? It's possible. Do you say, are you ask me, is it possible? Yeah, it's, 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 it's possible. Well, that would be... As, as, as I say, you, you, what, what it is, it's, it's a lack of our knowledge on the development, uh, about the development of the spiral That is uh, that's the head, that is the head, Tissue in a new project that you let's say you are supporting. Well, let's go back to. It's just this thing. Here I got a spiral key, and I'm sitting down, and I will tell you what is going to happen. First of all, I concentrate on the serology. Then I concentrate on the demonstration of whatever I see that should be a spiral key. Then I then concentrate on the tissue. What in the tissue is, is uh, infected? Is it, is it uh, uh, the, 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 the knee joint? Is it uh, uh, the, 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 the brain? Is it the lung? What is it? Then nothing like that has been done successfully. Well, let's go back to, can we go back to when you were infecting the rabbits and you euthanized them? When you, after you euthanized the rabbits, where did you find the spirochetes? Did you find... I cannot tell you. Be you cannot tell me because why? I, I, I can't tell you because it's always... The serology gives you a suggestion that something is there. And, the, and if you inoculate the tissue of the rabbit and it is a susceptible animal, uh, you don't 
don't get any, get any, any uh, 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 pictures, you don't get any static, it's, it's negative, and you wonder where it's the organism. So when you, when you would euthanize the rabbits, did you use direct visualization to try and see where the organism went? Yes. And you didn't find it anywhere? euthanized rabbits you look you did blood smears but you did not find the organism yeah and you did you you did tissue samples and you still did not find it but, yeah. but but you knew it was there yeah. <laughs> according to your thesis correct yeah right now let me can I switch I want to switch topics here a second are, are you familiar with the um the two groups of um, uh, opposing sides of how to treat this today. There's the Infectious Disease Society of America, and then there's the group called ILADS. Have you heard of ILADS? Yeah. Are you the the Infectious Disease Society of America says no matter what stage you're in, whether you're whether you've just been bitten or whether you have. Uh, second or tertiary chronic latent uh, they say no, ma no, no matter what stage you're in the course of therapy should be no more than 30 days and they say if you're still sick after 30 days they're calling it post Lyme syndrome and what they define that is as not active disease anymore but it's just symptoms that are persisting after the organism has been eradicated. Um, now, in your opinion, wh wh where do you stand on that? Wh do you think that 30 days of treatment in somebody that's been infected for years um, should eradicate mm -hmm. the disease? Uh -oh. uh, I mean, if you, if you ask me straight forward, I can straight out of my answer, no. So, as you, a patient. so you think it it would all come down to insurance it all comes down to the, it all comes down to the, there has to be something in the patient that he, I mean, he looks like a, a reoccurrence of uh, the disease now this is a process I can a I, I mechanism I, 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 only, you can only speculate you can speculate it's in the brain. You can speculate it because no one has found spirochetes in the brain. Like they do in the, in the, uh, like you do in syphilis. Why? Okay. The, 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 it, was, it was way, way, way back with uh, uh, Steiner and his German colleagues. They, they used uh, syphilis material and demonstrated the uh, organism in the various tissues of people infected or of animals infected. The same things you cannot do. At least yet you cannot do it. There is no technique yet that will demonstrate the spirochetes in the tissues of a chronically infected Patient, so, patient. so, if I understand you correctly, are you saying that you believe that 30 days of antibiotics would not be sufficient for someone who's chronically infected? Uh, you're asking a question here that gets into the problem with psychiatric disease. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Right, so, in other words... I mean, if you got kept the door, there's no need to go ahead and then... 
So, so do you think it has to come down? It comes down to the big pharmacological uh, insurance companies and yeah. having to spend money, um, and so yeah. that may you think that plays a big part in why they say only thirty days of treatment when longer treatment is needed. I have, uh, I don't know how many patients uh, since I retired have uh, gotten uh, uh, the hold of, 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 of my phone and called me and asked, same thing, Doc, I had uh, Lyme disease uh, four or five years ago and I have it again. I got a reoccurrence of the clinical manifestations. What can I do because I cannot afford to start the same intravenous treatment? These people are calling you? They you, you, you get phone calls even today about uh, this? A lot of them. I am not a physician. And that's the first thing I tell anybody. Uh, I'm glad to discuss with you the same problem that I have. And, uh, 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 and leave it with a discussion. Who is, uh, uh, I, have, I know, I know of a lot of, not a lot of, maybe a thousand of scientists who have done, the, uh, uh, have tried to demonstrate the presence of spirochies in tissues. Tissues, smears, tissues, uh, uh, and uh, have come out with nothing. Right. Uh, as a suggestion, like the suggestion that I had, and, and, and uh, uh, I can demonstrate very easily with uh, uh, relapsing fields by our kids. They, they, uh, you can demonstrate them, and you can demonstrate them until they're Legislature that the laws that have passed um, in the recent year in Connecticut, where they um, passed laws for insurance companies to pay for extended treatment. No, I'm not aware of that. Yeah, it, it's being done now in Connecticut, and other states are, are also trying to add this in. Um, I think you know part of the problem, um, even with long-term antibiotics, is is that because of the morphology and mutation of the spirochete, the antibiotics are not even able to um, get at the bacteria. Um, did you ever have um, a chance to use antibiotics on the spirochetes under microscopy to see what was effective and what was not? Yeah, that's, that's, I, I haven't done that. My colleagues have, and it's in literature, it is. So that the spirit cases, how are they being affected uh, after so and so treatment? And that is the problem that we can get uh, with uh, uh, the, the, oh, what is with that uh, doctor? Uh, oh, he was a religion, a religious person, and has. Uh, has uh, uh, has worked on silver. The the the, the silver uh, uh, treatment of patients. 
referring to colloidal silver? Yeah, colloidal silver. Right. Yeah. And that doctor, uh, he found that was effective? Uh, that, that, well, some people said yes. Some people, the most, the most people that have used it said no. I can tell you personally that I have used it and I have experienced severe Jarek's Herxheimer reactions. Yeah. You're familiar with Jarek's Herxheimer yeah. reaction, right? Yeah. Well, how long did it last? Well, the one, the one time I did it, I used it for five days in a row, and the severe Herxheimer reaction lasted a week afterwards. It, start, yeah. it started while I was using it, and I had to stop because it was getting so severe. Yeah. Um, I was having severe neurological manifestations with coll yes. colloidal silver, but you know it goes back. To, there's a lot of discussion today about biofilms with the Lyme disease and the reason why antibiotics cannot yes. uh, kill off the the uh, Lyme bacteria is because that the antibiotics cannot penetrate that biofilm and actually get to them. Um, now there's there are some antibiotics. Um, you, which are the macrolides? Are you familiar with those? Or like the cyst busters, they call them? No, I'm not familiar. Or like flagell, for example, is, is an antibiotic yeah. that is supposedly supposed to break up cysts, uh, the cyst form. So um, it's all, it's all. I think the problem today lies in even though these these. LLMDs or Lyme litter doctors that belong to this this group that says long term treatment is needed. Um, the problem still lies in how do you treat the patient? Because if you give the patient an antibiotic that will kill a spirochete that's just not, that is not in cyst form or that is um, not in L form um, or uh, has not mutated, uh, then that antibiotic would be effective. However, um, the problem is that when these antibiotics are administered, the spirochetes uh, somehow recognize the antibiotic and then they go into cyst form um, and therefore that antibiotic is not effective. So you have to have an arsenal of antibiotics going at once uh, to break up cyst forms, kill off Borrelia that's at a cyst form. Um, then there's this L form um, that they're taking, and so there's lots of videos out there um, on the inter on the internet today where you can actually see the different forms that these bacteria are taking. So it appears that even through an antibiotic approach, it's very difficult to eradicate and get to. Um, now, personally, myself, I'm using um, alternative medicine. I'm using something called Salt Sea Protocol, and I did a I did a year of IV antibiotics, and I did not get better at all. I actually got worse, and so I'm using high doses of sea salt or Himalayan sea salt and high doses of vitamin C, the vitamin C to boost the immune system, and the salt. I don't know if, if, if you're familiar with salt therapy, but it's been used for thousands of years yeah. to treat lots of illness. And I'm familiar with it. Right. So I'm using that and also um, the colloidal silver and some herbs. And, you know, I, I, it just came to me. Um, earlier in the conversation, you spoke of the nematoids that you were finding um, as well. And yes. how, how much of a part do you think um, that parasites play in this infection as well. Uh, this, uh, we're talking about these two infections with whole camel stuff that um, we still don't know. We have a little bit of an idea in a few cases, but. Uh, well, if you saw nematoids in... in it's, a, it's a mycophilarium. Right. Now, th those were also getting... When, when, when someone's bitten by a tick, they're getting the mycophilarial worm, 
as well as the spirochete, correct? So those those worms will lay eggs, and they the hatchlings will produce more uh, filarial type worms, and it, it potentially can cause yet another problem. Correct? Yeah, I mean that's that's where uh, there's this like filaria. Not the only ones. Any any of those of the, the patients of those the pathogens that gets gets into some some time does its development into its throughout the, the blood system and it can go into the various tissues. You are looking at the multitudes of possibilities that you are know, talking about the variable so far. And the only one thing that the uh, one can make a, a, a suggestion is well, what we need is we need a, 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 uh, 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 oh, what is it, what is it, uh, uh, well, you can take it, uh, we, we, we know about the serology, we know about the, the development now of the organism, and, and the varieties that it, we know about small forms and, and the intermediate forms and the, 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 we know about the suggestion that uh, uh, what McDonald has that he was referring to him. And, and uh, he says that the spire sheet uh, uh, cannot enter the, uh, what is it, uh, the cellular structures. Uh, I'm on the wrong track here. That's okay. I, I, I was just asking you um, about the nematoids and you know, whether you think that is possibly um, another potential problem with sick Lyme patients. That's all. And I think you... It's you, almost... It, 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 it's possible, but it's, uh, it, it's... It's not as bad as I think it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not enough to fix it. Right. In an area with... 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 Suppose I got bit by a tick that was, then, then you got something completely new then. Then, then you, then I'm dealing with spirochetes and nematoids and whatever else they picked up, correct? Yeah. So you're talking about a multitude of infections by a single tick that potentially can really uh, compromise okay. compromise someone's health. You know, okay. Dr. Okay. Birdifer, I just want to let you know that, and I'm sure you're aware that, you know, early on in this disease, people were getting mostly swelling in the joints and painful and stiff uh, neck and that kind of thing. But um, in the recent years, I guess because the tick has picked up more infection, um, but when it gets into the brain, it starts causing all sorts of neurological problems. And like, for me, example, um, it, my heart races, when I go from sitting to standing, my heart rate, well, it's getting better now, but it used to go from a heart rate of 60 to a heart rate of 160, just standing up. And then I would get short of breath for no reason. Um, inside the brain, I would feel, I know that there's no nerve ending in brain tissue, but it sure felt like it because of the, the, the pains I experienced inside the head and also outside the head. Um, and it affects our vision, and it causes Bell, uh, Bell's palsy with a lot of patients. It affects um, our thyroids get affected, and pituitary um, glands, and hypothalamus. And so we have all sorts of problems with regulating body temperature, and um, problems with emotions. And how is your walking? My walking is is not bad. Except that I get out of breath when I walk. I was getting out of the chair. It's not not a problem, but again, uh, you know, it's I get crushing fatigue, and 
I'm always cold and I have lots of uh, issues with balance. I feel off balance all the time. Yeah. And um, I mean, would you agree that when it gets into the brain, it can cause all of these problems? Yeah. And, you know, the doctors, a lot of us, we go to see a doctor because we're having these crazy symptoms and they all say, you need to go see a psychiatrist, you're depressed. Yeah. <laughs> and well, you know, you know, you know, you're, you're talking to someone who has, has half of the clinical manifestations in, 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 in my body. You do maybe yourself? Do, yeah, maybe due to a spirochetal infection. What, what, what did I have? I have uh, serology is uh, 1 to 124 positive against uh, the variety of antigen. But that's not, that's not, not, not. But what have I got clinically? I got uh, d d difficulties in, in, in walking. I got difficulties in getting out of a chair. I got different issues in, in keeping a straight, straight line. If I, if, 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 if cops would pick me up, they would say, you're drunk. Are you drunk and say, look. Do you experience, do you? You get all the, all the these minor stuff that it is not to be associated with what? Did I have blind disease? Did I have Lyme disease? I worked with it and possibly that I did uh, have an infection a uh, uh, long, long time ago uh, with, with, with tick-borne relapsing fever. All these things I cannot understand. Uh, I, I, I don't know. Do you, do you also have neurological type problems? Yeah, I go to the neurologist is looking at me every uh, do you believe that you have Lyme disease? That's what he says, and I haven't. I don't have. I don't have any title. But do you believe that you don't have it? I don't know. Well, okay, if you don't, if you don't talk about Lyme disease, talk about. Have you ever tried to treat it with antibiotics? Oh yeah. Did you, oh, yeah. did you experience Herxheimer reactions? Yeah. You did? Yeah. W wouldn't, yeah. wouldn't that be con consistent with the active infection of Lyme disease? Uh, you know, when, when with, with an infection, let's say, yes, it's an active one over a long period of time, I don't know I cannot tell you. Do you have any other kind of infection? Well, I don't know. Well, 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 it's another your age is getting up there too. Well, of course they're going to say that <laughs> when they cannot find the serology, right? That's exactly you can have that also. If you go to the doctor and say to the doctor, doctor, I got Lyme disease. Uh, if I was practicing physician, I think it would come to that, that it be, I would have to say, well, I'm glad that you got Lyme disease, but that you don't come. You see, you see me, you don't need any treatment anymore. That's true. You said you got Lyme disease. That, uh, that is so amazing to me that the man that discovered the bacteria cannot even get proper treatment for himself. I feel for you. <laughs> I had the anti-disease, the, 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 the uh, anti, uh, uh, the treatment for Right, and and uh, but you and and, and uh, it was a waste, it was a waste of time and a waste of money. Right, on. but you said you treated with antibiotics, correct? They treated antibiotics and 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 treated with something that the neurologist uh, uh, tell me after I have. What is that, if I could ask? Is it, it's a pill or an IV? It's a pill. Right. 
I was just, I was wondering if it was glutathione. They use that a lot, um, but uh, I think um, Dr. Bertifer, you've answered probably all the questions I have for you today. Um, I really, really, really appreciate your time. Um, you're just you're just a, a wonderful person, and um, it means a lot to me that you were able to spend this time with me on the phone. Um, what? What do what, we what, what have to have? The, 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 the important statement that I can make is more important than what I said. We have to know what happens with the organism once it enters the bloodstream. The problem is... How long, how long is it in the bloodstream? Nobody's looking at it right now to see. I don't know if you know that, but it appears that way anyway. It's certainly not in the news. Um, again, they, they have this big debate going on between these two groups of doctors, uh, and the, the Infectious Disease Society of America is the one that reports to the CDC, and it appears that their 30-day of treatment recommendation that is approximately 30 years old or more uh, is still what is in place and nothing has changed in 30 years and I just personally find that absolutely ridiculously amazing. Yeah, they are. <laughs> Maybe we are barking up the wrong tree. And we are concentrating on the morphology of the spiral kit in the tissues. We cannot find it. Well, what is it that causes uh, uh, relapses? Are the, is, what is it that is, is, it, is it associated with something that is, has gotten loose in the system of the spiral kit infection? Or is it the spiral kit in itself? It's got to be there, Dr. Berdefor, because it's got to be there. And I only say that with confidence because all of us that are treating, whether it be antibiotics, alternatively, you know, homeopathic medicine, herbal medicine, all of us are experiencing severe Herxheimer reactions with yeah. the treatment. When we stop treatment, we have a baseline that we go back to sometimes it improves. However, uh, the Herxheimer reaction is a sure sign that we have active infection. And I, I don't think anybody would negate that. But you have a breakdown of the organism. Ex exactly. And, and the, the other problem, of course, with most of us is that our detoxification um, methods in our bodies are not working correctly either. So the uh, the um, spirochete, when it is killed off, is releasing toxins that we cannot get rid of um, effectively. And I think that if we could, then we probably wouldn't feel so sick. It's, it, it, it may just be the, the presence of the toxins themselves because the spirochete life cycle is, what is it, 28 days? Is that correct? Yeah. So, so you 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 constantly you're having natural yeah. natural die off, and yeah. without any kind of treatment, and that's why I think people are feeling sick from a baseline perspective. But anyway, listen, um, I won't keep you anymore. I I just uh, I really again appreciate your time, and um, I just you know I think I, when I told when we started the conversation, I just wanted to let you know that you know I I, I um record these and. I just wanted your permission that I can share all this with, with my group. Yeah, no, I, I, I think it's, 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 if, if 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 anyone has any um, follow up questions, would you be um, up, would you be okay with me to call you again in the future? 
Somebody has to tell that research scientist to, to go ahead and do what you're suggesting, because apparently no one is doing that. Yeah. It's not in the news. We're all too sick to sit to sit and protest in front of the White House. That's right. And so what are we supposed to do? You know, it, it, when you go back to the AIDS epidemic, these patients were sick, but they were a lot of them were not sick enough where they could not go out and protest and. They, and they did, they went out and protest, and when they did that, then that's when things got moving, and that's when things got changed, and that's when um, remedies, uh, medical uh, remedies came out to help these people, um, w not only with their symptoms, but prolonging their lives and giving them quality of life. So w when you take a Lyme patient who has chronic Lyme and... A lot of them are bed bound. They cannot leave the house for whatever reason. There is no rallies, and um, I mean there are there are rallies um, taking place around the United States right now. And with the advent of the technology, with the internet, people are coming together now and forming groups. So I think it's just a matter of time. Um, and certainly, the internet has also uh, raised awareness to not just the United States, but the entire world, that not only is this a real disease, but because of the groups that are being forming, uh, that are being formed, such as the one I run, I am seeing so many people infected with this, and the numbers are hundreds of thousands, if not more, of sick people out there with Lyme disease, and a lot of them are being misdiagnosed with Diagnosis such as lupus, MS, chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, the list goes on and on and on. And so these people that are told by a doctor that they have fibromyalgia, they go home and what do they do? They take narcotics for their pain when in, fa when in fact it's Lyme disease. And so they're putting a band-aid on their symptom rather than addressing the real issue. And you can't blame them because there's nothing else out there for them. And if they become aware of it and they can find a doctor willing to treat them for Lyme disease, then and only then do they have a chance of getting well. Yeah. Otherwise, they will have this, whatever it is that they're being diagnosed with for the rest of their lives. It's terrible. Yeah. It's really, really terrible. Yeah, strangely enough, Dave, a number of doctors are willing to do this. Nothing to do with Lyme patients. The number of them are decreasing rapidly. Yeah, well, you know, this is not being taught in mainstream medicine. Um, the, the people that are going to school to become doctors are not being taught about Lyme disease. And, if, and when they are, they're being taught 30 days of treatment. And they're, they, they're being taught Western blot only. Um, for diagnosis. So clinical diagnosis based on symptoms alone is pretty much out the window for these mainstream doctors. And it's really it's really a shame. Yeah. But that's the way it is for right now. But um well, let's hope for the best um, let's hope that there's one 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 day somebody's developing or or finding a key to a staining procedures that, that stains the spinal teeth also in the blood stream and in 
Well, there's enough people out there, like me, that will make sure that does happen. I've been, I've been a registered nurse for 18 years. I've been out of work for the last four years because of this. And before I had to stop working, I was working 12-hour shifts, and I was working in emergency rooms and shock trauma. And you have seen a lot of things like that. All of a sudden, one day I woke up and I had crazy symptoms and I, I had to take a leave of absence, which turned into a long-term disability. And I was hospitalized five, six different times. I had a brain catheterization, heart catheterization, um, just a multitude of tests where everything came out normal. I had about eight or nine MRIs, probably 15 CAT scans in my head, and every time it came out normal yet I had symptoms that were consistent with neurological Lyme disease. Now, you know, just to finish up, I just want to emphasize, and I'm sure you'll agree on this, a CAT scan or an MRI is not going to pick up on an organism that can only be seen under 10,000 power microscopy. <laughs> so it's not, su it's not surprising that these, that these results um, from these scans are normal. But... Um, it is what it is for right now. So again, I thank you for your time, and uh, you're welcome. And I uh, hope the best for you. All right, Doctor Burdifer, you take care, and be all. get yourself checked out for Lyme, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They always say the same thing to me. Said when I hear my colleague, go ahead, get another blood sample. Get another blood sample. We'll find out. We'll find out. Well. Once to 124 is the Titan, the positive Titan. That's the only thing I have. Yeah, 124? Yeah. And that's positive, but they still say you don't have it. <laughs> so what, what, do they say, what do they say you have when you have a positive 124? Well. <laughs> I'm, not I'm not familiar with 124. There's so many different bands. Yeah. But... If you have posi if you have positive one twenty four, what are they telling you? It doesn't mean anything. Doesn't mean anything. I don't see you talking about other diseases. Come come and the last he get older. The fact that he can't do this and this is because of the neurological nerves. Well, I, I, that would make sense because it's not specific that probably, probably that band, and again, I'm not familiar with it, but certainly you take, if, if there are other diseases that they're saying it could be, well, then you have to take your symptoms and put it with that band and say, does this match up? And the only one it really matches up with, from what you're telling me, sounds like Lyme disease to me. Yeah. Well, good luck to you on that. And like I said, if I have um, follow-up questions from the group, I'll certainly entertain you with them. And I appreciate you uh, spending all the time you did with me today and your uh, invitation to call you back. And I may be, take, I may be taking you up on that. <laughs> yeah, and uh, if, if, you do, if you do get uh, opening up somehow, if you do the results, let me know. I sure will. You take care and have a have a great day, Doctor Burgdorfer. Take care.